Have you ever looked at a work of art and felt moved or inspired by its message? Or have you ever been to a museum or exhibition and noticed that the visitors all seem to be from the same social or economic background? The world of art can be a powerful force for change, but it's not always accessible to everyone. Let me tell you a story about an artist named Banksy. In 2018, he created a mural in New York City that depicted a refugee girl holding a heart-shaped balloon. The mural appeared on the wall of a building in the Lower East Side, a neighborhood known for its diverse and immigrant communities. But just a few days after it was created, the mural was vandalized and eventually removed. This incident highlights the issue of social inequality in the arts. Who gets to decide which art is worthy of being displayed or preserved? And how can we ensure that everyone has equal access to the world of art and culture? Today, we'll be exploring these questions and more in our podcast episode on Jacques Rancière and the relationship between art, politics, and social inequality. Join me as we delve into the world of art and discover how it can be a tool for resistance and empowerment. We live in a world where access to the arts and culture is often tied to social and economic privilege. The resources and opportunities available for artists and art enthusiasts are not always equally distributed, and this has serious implications for society at large. Marginalized communities, such as low-income neighborhoods or communities of color, often lack the resources and access to cultural institutions that more affluent communities take for granted. This means that they may not have the same opportunities to learn about or participate in the arts, limiting their ability to express themselves, share their stories, or challenge dominant narratives. In politics, the lack of access to the arts can also be a form of silencing or marginalization. When certain groups are excluded from the creation or consumption of art, their voices and perspectives are not represented in the broader cultural discourse. This can perpetuate social inequalities and prevent meaningful change. For example, consider the recent controversy over Confederate statues in the United States. Many people have called for the removal of these statues, arguing that they glorify a history of racism and oppression. However, those who support the statues often argue that they are an important part of American history and culture. This debate highlights the role of art and culture in shaping our collective memory and understanding of the world around us. The problem of social inequality in relation to the arts and politics is complex and multifaceted, but it's crucial that we acknowledge and address it if we want to build a more just and equitable society. Imagine walking into a gallery or a museum and being struck by a piece of art that seems to speak to you directly. Maybe it's a painting, a sculpture, or a photograph. Whatever it is, it resonates with you in a way that's hard to put into words. But what if I told you that not everyone has the same opportunity to experience this feeling? The world of art has long been associated with wealth, privilege, and exclusivity. From the elitist art schools and galleries to the high prices of artwork, the art world has often seemed out of reach for those who are not part of the cultural elite. But this is just one aspect of a much larger problem, social inequality. The fact is that access to the arts is not evenly distributed, and marginalized communities often lack the resources and opportunities to engage with art. This is where the work of philosopher Jacques Rancière comes in. Rancière argues that art can be a powerful tool for challenging the status quo and disrupting the power structures that uphold social inequality. His approach challenges traditional views of art as simply serving the interests of the ruling class and instead emphasizes the importance of democratizing access to the arts and empowering marginalized communities through art. Through the idea of dissensus, Rancière argues that art can spark social change by challenging established norms and giving voice to those who are often silenced. Think about protest art, or the work of artists who give voice to marginalized communities through their art. These works disrupt our expectations and force us to confront uncomfortable truths about the world we live in. So what's the solution? Rancière's approach offers a path forward that prioritizes art as a means of resistance and a way to challenge social inequality. By democratizing access to the arts and empowering marginalized communities through art, we can begin to break down the barriers that separate us and create a more equitable and just society. As we move forward, let's remember that art has the power to inspire, 
to challenge, and to transform. Let's embrace the power of art to disrupt established norms and spark social change. Let's work to make the world of art a more inclusive and democratic space for all. Let me tell you about the journey of a woman named Maria, who grew up in a low-income neighborhood where access to the arts was limited. She had a passion for poetry and literature from a young age, but her family couldn't afford to buy books or pay for classes. Despite this, Maria found ways to nurture her love of the arts. She would often sneak into the library during her lunch breaks and read books for hours, or sit in on poetry readings at the community center. As she got older, Maria became increasingly aware of the social inequality that surrounded her. She saw how the lack of access to the arts in her community meant that talented young people were often overlooked or discouraged from pursuing their passions. She also noticed that the art that did exist often failed to represent the diverse experiences and perspectives of the people in her community. Determined to make a change, Maria decided to take matters into her own hands. She began organizing poetry readings and art exhibitions in local community centers and parks, inviting artists and writers from diverse backgrounds to share their work. Despite initial pushback from city officials, who saw these events as a disturbance, Maria persisted, and soon her events became a staple in the community. As her events grew in popularity, Maria began to feel a sense of empowerment and purpose. She realized that the arts could be a powerful tool for social change, a way to challenge the status quo and give voice to marginalized communities. She also discovered the work of Jacques Rancière, who articulated the idea that the arts could be a means of resistance a way to disrupt the prevailing power structures and create new possibilities for action and social change. Inspired by Rancière's ideas, Maria began to think of her events not just as a way to showcase art, but as a form of political action. She started organizing protests and demonstrations alongside her exhibitions, using her platform to raise awareness about social inequality and demand change. Through her work, Maria became a beacon of hope for her community inspiring young people to pursue their passions and use the arts as a means of resistance and empowerment. Thanks for listening, and we hope you enjoyed this episode. Up until next time, take care, and see you soon.